He was shot on Christmas Eve. His birthday is today. He um, will be 20 years old. Um, Rayshawn Maurice Jackson. And um, I'd like to acknowledge this young man. He's part of our community. And he died young over some senseless and um, hard medical, I understand. His, um, his cousin is here. His mother and his other cousins and siblings should be here a little later. But um, I just wanted to put them out there and lift them up because they are having a, uh, a, a visual of, 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 of appreciation of his life. His birthday is today and they'll be doing their thing, lifting up, um, letting balloons go. But as part of the community, we want to acknowledge his, his loss. And um, those these things we want to stop and address from educating our youth and reaching our youth. And um, it's very important for us to do those things because they are the ones who will lead and speak to the people tomorrow. So all efforts and all support is needed and appreciated. And I want to thank y'all. Um, if y'all give me a moment, I'd like to read a little bit from his obituary that his cousin broke. Um, Rayshawn Maurice Jackson, 19, of Richmond, Virginia, departed this life December the 24th, 2011. He was preceded to death by his grandparents, Mar Marine, Mar Marine, um, Mary, Marianne, Maddie, A. Jackson, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I said it wrong, and two uncles, Howard and Timothy Jackson. Rayshawn was part of the graduating class of 2010 of Herico High School. He also attended Faith Landmark Church faithfully every Sunday with his brother, his brother, sister, young cousin, and friend. Sean enjoyed watching the Pittsburgh Steelers on any given Sunday whenever he wasn't listening to his favorite rapper, Lil Boosie. All right. He also enjoyed hanging out with family and friends. With Sean, he had a smile that would make you give him your last. That's how pretty his smile was to people. He was very well-mannered and did whatever you asked him to do with no problem. He was very humble and laid back. With Sean Lee to cherish his memory, a loving and supportive mother, Colita Jackson, his, his father, Colette Jackson, his father, Michael Maine, two sisters, Kawanda Jackson and Shanice Charity, three brothers, Anthony and Jamal Jackson and Michael Charity, grandparents, Henry and Geneva Mann, five aunts, and Antoinette Hickman, Brenda Jackson, C Celine Davis, Victoria Mack, Samantha Stokes, Vic Vi B, three uncles, William Mann, John Hickman, Stefan Mann. Sean was loved by a host of great aunts, great uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, and many dear friends. Five best friends, Gavon Jermaine, Shamar Johnson, Quante Jermaine, Jaquan Temple, and Robert Scott, and his devoted friend, Johnita Russell. Now, at the bottom, it got a little um, uh, respect for the family. It says, no farewell words were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God can tell us why. We did not see you close your eyes or hear your last sigh. We only heard that you were gone too late, so too, too late to say goodbye. So um, with that, I'd like to have a moment of silence in respect for Rayshawn and the young three-year-old um, little girl who lost her life from last night um, in the East End shot by a straight bullet and everything. We're losing them too young, too fast, for senseless things. So for a moment of silence, can we have that please now? Thank you for your attention and love and peace to all those we didn't mention and who have lost this week alone. How y'all doing? Hey, hey, hey. Y'all look beautiful out here. Hey. I want to um, salute Occupy Richmond as well. I occupy the hood together. I'm just happy that, you know, this big event came out. I'm actually, you know, I'm actually from this community too as well. So it's, it's, it's a joyous feeling to um, see all the people that came out, you know, right now for this typical event, especially in Oak Road, you know. Um, Basically what Occupy the Hood, what it means to me, it means to me a humanitarian group. It's not, you know, it's not about a color thing. It's about all people think, as well as like Occupy Richmond. We are basically the same. We are focused on basically giving back to the youth. It's more, you know, as far as with the knowledge and different things, like schools, you know, we, we offer them our learning. You know, a lot of kids, like like um, Brother Mark just said, um, a lady, actually a little girl got shot um, three years old last night. 
over the East End. So we want to, as far as with the occupation, we want to be the part that ticks back our communities and get them to focus on the awareness of everything. Because we know it's not about a color thing, this is about a humanitarian thing. This is what we all fight for, a humanitarian thing. This is what we really want to focus on. But that's my whole biggest thing as far as with the consciousness, just to be more aware of our views, our rights, to know our rights. You know, a lot of kids don't even know the rights. Um, and you know, a lot of kids don't care about knowing the rights. You know, because that's because we as parents, we as adults, we have to educate the kids. And especially by in communities like this, around here and everything, I mean, it's, the knowledge is needed. Definitely needed, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, I'm Ken Tate. Um, if y'all have any questions for me, um, I, I'll be willing to assist y'all in, in anything. Um, shout out to Occupy Richmond. All y'all, y'all look beautiful out there. I can say any more if anyone else want to speak. But thank y'all, though. Thank, thank y'all for welcoming us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That boy blew me away when I heard it. <laughs> That's his stage name. I said, okay, one way slave, go for it. <laughs> um, um, Jason. Jason Brown. All right, a lot of y'all might know, already know Jason Brown, but Jason Brown can give y'all, introduce himself, and give y'all his vision of Occupy the Hood. And it's from his perspective. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, hey, Jason. When we, when we first started this thing, we, um, we, we came to Occupy Richmond. We wanted to occupy with you guys. Um, we were kind of ticked off about the whole Troy Davis incident. Um, we, we had just found out about mass incarceration, so we were just pissed off. You know what I'm saying? So the, all this came from anger. But at the same time, we knew that we had to do it in a, a non-violent way. And, and, the, and the main reason for that is because we want to show the world how savage other people can be. You know, even when, you, when you're a part of a peaceful movement, there are always those people that are going to come and attack you. Like you guys got attacked down at Canal Park. You know, that, that's how I'm looking at it. That was a, that was a, uh, that was an attack. You know, so. Uh, but this is uh, we we decided to go out on the street and start filming people, and getting their opinions and stuff like that. And we, we wanted to have a more direct, hands-on approach because we liked the idea that you guys were occupying, but we felt like you guys needed people out there in, in, in the area to go and talk to people door to door, you know, and that's, that's what we took on as our responsibility. And, um, and, it, and it grew, and, and we started off with three people, and now, you know, the, the, the website's like 400 or something. You know, it is. Yes. <laughs> So apparently there are a lot of people that feel like we do. So, <laughs> but um, I'm glad to see Occupy Richmond. I, I couldn't have did this without you guys, and I, and I appreciate everybody. I, I swear, you just don't know how much this means to me. And um, we're going to keep it rolling from here. We're going to keep it rolling from here, and I, and I hope that you guys come out to more GA or, or whatever this is um, <laughs> that we're having. But we, we're going to have more of them. We're going to uh, try to get them. Um, we'll try to get a more of a, of a community feel in our community because uh, right now uh, a lot of people are afraid of each other. Uh, they live right next door to each other, but they don't even want to talk to each other because of, of what they might do, you know. And that and that's uh, that's something we need to stop. You know? um, but that's all I have to say, and I just want to thank you guys for coming out. And uh, peace. Thanks, thanks. You. I do want to make a couple of announcements. It, yeah. um, Occupy the Dream is only a few days away. It's going to take place in 13 cities, including Richmond, Virginia. It's going to be down at Canal Plaza, I believe. Um, they said the Federal Reserve Building, but I don't think they're going to like that. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, January the 16th. Um, I'm, I'm, you guys are all welcome to come out, and I hope you guys come out. And also, uh, January the 15th, wherever you may, may be, um, worldwide, we're holding a candlelight vigil for Dr. King. Um, it's going to be worldwide, 7 o'clock, no matter what time is on your end. And I hope that you guys um, participate in that, because we're going to try to make the Google map blow as we play. <laughs> all right. all right, that's all I have to say. All right, Thanks, I just want to say that this is a rally GA. I, uh, I, I, 
no 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 offense to you, but um, I just wanted you know this is um, a rally point in the GA. Now I know we are familiar with the process and what GAs and, and, and tells and everything, and and the Occupy the Hood has had um, make some modifications. So the process of the GA is not in full effect, but we know that um, we're educating and as we rub shoulders and elbows together. Thing we'll pass on the good traits that what Occupy Richmond do have to offer, and you know what I'm saying, and allow Occupy the Hood to gather their strength and formulate them and make the modifications needed to be, make itself more official. And, and that's what this it, um, brings to um, Occupy Hood the union of, of, of strength, knowledge, and, and efforts. So, um, I just wanted to you know, let that be defined that um, this is something, this is big, you know, and this is great. This community right here, I, I grew up four blocks away. In this community right here, I came and got my lunches when I was a little shorty. In this community right here, I, I came and left the house and, and rolled my, my weed right on one of these benches. In this community right here, I sold them drugs right around here. So this community had big, the good, bad, and ugly, but it got a lot of good. It got a lot of good. But y'all, it's still a hell of a lot of ugly still out here. You know what I mean? I know. You know what I'm saying? Too much ugly. Too much unawareness. Too much uh, misdirection, miscommunication, and assumptions of what we should be about. And when the community has, the, has, fell, has fell apart from those notions of the, um, the wrong things coming into it and taking root and just destroying and it's still it's at our kids the young kids out here bright and shiny and everything playing and laughing five years from now if the intervention ain't given they'll be selling that drug and they'll be on that drug and they'll be pointing those guns and we don't want that you know what i'm saying out of 20 you know what i'm saying we'll get three to four that will continue on and follow through their education you know what i'm saying out of 20 we won't get maybe 19 or of them hopefully not but 19 i'm gonna have problems with the police and they don't know their rights, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and their families don't know their rights. They don't know how to go about getting lawyers and they're waiting for something or appointed lawyers to, to, to solve the problems and all these things and the laws is not in their favor. So this is my heartbeat, this community right here. You know what I'm saying? I kissed that girl on that bench over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this means a lot and I really, um, really appreciate it. All the love and attention and the gas and the time that y'all have taken to assemble yourselves here. Because even though they still at the flea market shopping, and even though they still and they're watching from their windows what they're doing over there, and even though, you know what I'm saying, they're doing other things, we here. And the kids are being tapped and connected with. That's my main thing. You know what I'm saying? If um if um you can't teach an old dog new trick. And give me a damn puppy and I'll work for it. <laughs> oh, baby. So, so, right. so, Kente has something else you like to address. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like Mark said too, ladies and gentlemen, this this is my community as well. And my thing is, I just want to say I love all of y'all. Because one thing that we truly miss in this community, as well as all over, we miss love. We lack love. One person can't fix this situation that's going on. All of us have to fix it. Right. And, and you know, Occupy Richmond, I mean, this is the amazing jobs I've been seeing on the videos with, with everything. I, I mean, as far as me, it makes me proud, like, to see people that really standing up for something. And they stand up for humanity. That's the biggest thing. That's why I said we, we lack love as people. And I'm just so happy and joyous to see everyone around. Like we said, everybody's not... They didn't come out yet. I guess they still shopping and just like you said, doing everything else. But see, we got so much distractions going on that, you know, we can promote it. We can promote it how bad we want to, but the distractions just keep on coming. So if it's not no money involved, I bet you if I said I can give everybody $5, it would have been packed today. It would have been packed around if I give everybody $5 and told everybody that, you know, but why does it take money? Why does it take money for us to come together? You know? My thing is, I just want to tell everyone I love y'all, and that's it. Uh, unofficially, officially, we have begun the introduction, y'all. So, um, um, I want Sonia uh, as another um, core member and um, the one who contributed a lot to um, Occupy the Hood. She went on, went out to pick up somebody who needed a ride, so she hasn't returned yet and everything. Um, 
My thoughts go to um, Stephen. Where is Stephen? Right here. Right behind Stephen. All right. I like Stephen to speak. Um, got you, did it, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> got you, did it, Stephen. Got you. That's right. Got you. My favorite guys. Got you. Catch him. No pressure. Get him free. No pressure. Right. Daddy, your mama called me. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name's Steve. Uh, I work with uh, Richmond Cop Watch and uh, Richmond Anarchist Black Cross and a couple other groups. Um, hopefully some more folks from uh, Cop Watch will be getting here in a little while and we're gonna have a Know Your Rights training Creole. Um, but I guess Mark wanted me to speak a little bit on, um, on why that's important. And um, I guess a lot of the work that uh, those two groups do is based around the fact that, um, you know, Police activity is, is, is very pointed, and uh, and want to okay a little closer. That better. All right. Um, you know, definitely in Richmond, uh, we have one of the highest incarceration rates in the country, and uh, and at the same time, the U.S. Uh, imprisons more people uh, than any other country in the world, uh, even more people than, than China, which has a population of one billion. Um, and there, there are particular reasons for that. It's, it's not because uh, because people in the U.S. are just you know worse and uh, and like to commit crime more. Um, we we challenge the idea of what crime really is. Um, oftentimes, it's politically motivated, and we can see that manifest in a lot of different ways. Um, with folks like us who are out here right now. Uh, who want to who want to make change and want to do something? Um, crime can be the fact that that we are here, that we're conspiring to, to change anything. You know, whether we're, we're working against a system or even working with it, exercising our, our First Amendment rights puts us on the map for for activity that can you know lead you to be singled out. Um, and so we want to work to to protect people from. Uh, from being picked up because of the way things are moving now with uh, certain legislation, you know, uh, the government's basically being given license to uh, to just disappear anyone at any time um, and hold them indefinitely through the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, um, which is just a uh, you know a further manifestation of mass incarceration, as you know, they were mentioning earlier. Um, which is something that's developed since the 70s um, and, and that has resulted in, you know, basically more black men being incarcerated now than were ever in slavery um, before emancipation. Um, and so we've seen the, the prisons become the new, the new plantations. And um, so we work for prison abolition because Essentially, we, we believe that the prison accomplishes nothing but to, to restrict the rights of people who, uh, who want to work to better things or have not had the, uh, the same levels of privilege and opportunity that others have had and have struggled to uh, provide for themselves in whatever way possible, but um, are only given certain avenues. Um, we can see that in the war on drugs and the amount of people who are incarcerated just for for issues of vice, um, the war on drugs has been an, an integral part of mass incarceration, um, and so one thing uh, definitely is to uh, is just basic um, understanding of your rights as a citizen when dealing with the police, um, because I, I'm sure most of you are familiar uh, when you encounter the cops. What one of the main things that they're going to ask you is. Uh, if they can search you, or if you have anything on you that you shouldn't have, and what is that usually? That they usually mean drugs, and uh, and you don't. There's there's 
ways that you can protect yourself from that because you may not even be carrying anything. You may not even have anything that's um, illegal, but it might turn up uh, somehow. Uh, not too long ago, an officer from the Bronx admitted that uh, it was regular for the NYPD to uh, do what's called uh, flake and frisk, uh, where they essentially plant drugs on people um, that they stop randomly, um, just in order to raise conviction rates and get certain peoples off the street. Um, it seems far-fetched, unfortunately, to a lot of people, um, and that's why we want to we want to talk more and more about about how real it is and how real um, the effect is on uh, our community and you know uh, this country at large. So um, I guess uh, I'll hand it back over to Mark, but hopefully in a little while we'll be getting on with the Know Your Rights stream. Thank you, Steven. Good information. Good information. This young, this young man right here, um, I, I say this, and y'all heard me say it before, two weeks before Occupy, I probably spoke to him, he probably spoke to me. But by being in the midst of the Canal Plaza and living under the elements and the fear, not fear, but under the concern of being arrested, you know what I'm saying, we became brothers, you know? And I respect that man, his mindset, he's very well versed. You know, I thought I knew a lot, but I learned some things talking with him, you know? And um, I think it's mutual respect, and I appreciate him, you know what I'm saying? My, me, when I heard the word anarchist a few years ago, I thought of Antichrist. What's that? What's going on? I was in fear of what I didn't understand and didn't know. And um, as I got closer, it didn't bite me. And I got a little closer, you know, it, it, it enlightened me. And I, I appreciate and I understand that and everything. So I, 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 we, we do more of that pulling closer instead of seeing what our differences are and staying away. We, we'll have a bigger gathering here, you know, and, and, and um, we're working towards that moment that day. Um, Sonia has to go to pick up somebody, that she has, as I said, and I would love for her to have a moment when she returns and everything. But at, at this point and stage, um, Come here, Miss Lady. How you doing? Good. Yeah. Come on, share some information with us. What am I sharing? <laughs> struggling, trying to put food on our tables, trying to get employment, trying to get health care benefits, and, you know, we're the people who are struggling, right? Um, so what the Virginia People's Assembly does is say, actually, we want to be able to make decisions for ourselves and our lives and be able to support our lives and our communities and our families because it's really, really important. Um, so four years ago, we started the Virginia People's Assembly. It's a gathering of different organizations across Virginia 
um, multiracial, work on all kinds of different things, everything from prison reform to housing issues to immigration to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender rights to reproductive rights. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make a mass gathering of people who work on these issues, trying to make our lives better, to come together in one place. So it's going to be next Saturday, January 14th, uh, from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. We're going to have a networking conference where we're all going to get together and get to know everybody. And then from 5 to 6, we're going to have a march on the state capitol. And then from 7 to 9, we're going to have a mass rally under the slogan, jobs, peace, and justice, because we know that none of us can do this apart and that we need to do it together. Um, if you need more information, you can come up to talk to me. There's a couple of other folks here who have been working to get this together. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing you all out, um, and have a great rest of the day. It's really awesome to see you all out here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Melinda. Uh, good information there. Um, I've been helping a little behind the scenes with the BPA um, uh, rally and um, the protest thing, and it's, it's good stuff. It's needed to stand up to that um, to those forces that be and, and the things that are going on and um, make more people aware of it. It's, it's, it's a big deal, you know. I, I, I feel like it's just as um, important to me, and the people need to know. Like the mayor got sixty-two million dollars for the city and everything, and then and um. And um, in our meeting, he said, "Well, you know, we are, we got same some of the same things. You know, we are um, uh, feeding the hungry here, and uh, we're building the jail bigger and better. And they're gonna learn how to well." Great clown. Okay, I missed something. When well, you say you feed the hungry, you're building a bigger and better jail, and you're gonna re rehabilitate them to, to teach them how to well. Um, what about stopping them before they get to the prison? What about educating them at the school? Oh. Let's put an extra woman on a building to the school. Where the education money going? Where, where that at? You know what I mean? Improve that. Improve that. They won't have to rebuild and make a bigger, better prison. They teach them how to well. What the fuck they gonna do with that? Excuse me. Excuse my language. What they gonna do with that? You know what I'm saying? So I, we, we need a, we need to challenge to these people who control and decide where our tax dollars and where the money is going. We need to challenge them people and stand up and let them know we're not feeling that and we don't need that. We don't need a bigger and better jail. I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need a. You know what I'm saying? We don't need that. I need a bigger and better community. You know what I'm saying? With the right resource and the right grocery stores and the schools not dilapidating and all those type of things. We was in South South Plaza last week and two young men told us there's so many roaches and, and things running around in the schools and the books so messed up and everything and he's like, I don't know the age for real, but it's between 9 and 12. But I'm saying, you know, that's not fair to the kids. Is that a good environment to come learn in when you got to stump the roach out underneath your desk? You know what I mean? Come on now. So, you know, pay the teachers. Pay the teachers the wages they deserve. You know what I mean? Come on now. Come on, man. Where, where, you, where you thinking? Where you at on that? And not just some others, you know. But um, we're going to move forward with that and um, let them know we're not feeling that. The people not feeling that. And, um, and on that note, i like to read um, not a direct quote, but it is um, a good thing. Uh, 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 a line of support and everything. Occupy the Hood stands on our First Amendment right and move in the spirit of Curtis Harris, Frederick Douglass, Dr. Walker, Fred Hampton, Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, and nonviolence, bringing awareness as well as change to the community in the struggle with economical betterment, eradicating poverty, and holding our lawmakers accountable. And with that, as long as we stand in those points and those principles, Mr. Ray Boone, bless Occupy hood, the Hood with his support. And I just want to acknowledge that and appreciate Mr. Ray Boone. All right. All right. Um, I still don't see Sonia. She still, still, so that's the next person y'all will be seeing and hearing from. She's one of the um, founding co um, contributors to organizing Occupy the Hood and to evolving to what we are beginning today. And, um, she has a sharp mind, sharp tongue too sometimes, but she, she's very cool to work with and got a lot of passion. I call her Miss Soldier, for real, and everything. And um, so she take a seatbelt off and, and get through the fence, and then they can't be talking with her and everything. But um, 
I just love the fact that uh, the kids are playing and we are gathering. And we're talking about these issues and we, we're speaking loud about it and we're not shy. And I, I'm cool with the Facebook and I love YouTube because I stayed away from Facebook for a long time to do my YouTube thing. But you know what I'm saying? I like to see the people I'm talking to and I like to touch the people I'm, I'm communicating with. And I like the hugs. I like hugs. So don't ever bad it. Y'all remember, give me a hug before y'all leave. I like them hugs. Um, Miss Sonia. Miss Soldier. That's right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. First of all, I would like to say thank you, Occupy Richmond. Because without you guys, this would not be possible. I really greatly appreciate all of your support. Um, wish it was a little bit more people out here, but this is still the beginning. That's right. This is still the beginning. We have a long way to go. But at the same time, I'm loving the energy. Uh, there's so much we have to do. I brought my brother Maurice with me today. We had to pick him up. Right, right. Um, he told me a story that I would like to share with you guys. Yes. He said it's, it's not really a good story, but it's a story that I think that we all need to hear. Basically, they got pulled over. Now, my brother's in a wheelchair, mind you. The police officer was asking him questions about if they had rocket launchers and bazookas and weapons and drugs or whatever the case may be. And it just made me think about the arrest and detain and how they can arrest people and detain you indefinitely without a trial. It almost feels as though they are targeting certain areas and targeting certain people for that reason. Why would we have bazookas in the hood? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do with rocket launches? You know, so it's almost trying to, it's like they're trying to make us look like terrorists. I just say that to let y'all know that this is the type of battle that we're fighting. This is big and it's huge. And um, the brother, what's his name? Phil? Here. He left. Okay. We were having a discussion online yesterday, and you know, he made some valid points. He said, We have to do this as a family, as a unit, all of us together. Even though we represent the hood and we represent the African American community, all of us together have to do this to make this thing happen. Because if we don't, if we divide, I can see where it's going to be problems. Okay. So, we all sisters and brothers in this. I don't have too much I wanted to say about it, but I really, again, I thank you guys, and let's have some fun. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Keep moving in the spirit of um, womanhood. Can Miss Teddy um, address the people for a moment? Yes. Oh, dirty habit. They never told me it was habit forming and it could cause cancer. But it's a little bit too late now. <laughs> So anyway, look, I found a couple of poems that I wanted to share with you all. Yes. And over the years, I have been collecting these poems when I worked in the schools, when I worked in the neighborhoods, and the first one is called, What's Wrong With Our Country? I think it started when Madeline Maury O'Hare complained that we didn't want prayers in school and we said okay. Then someone said, you can't read the Bible in school. The Bible that says you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't steal, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. And we said, okay. Then Dr. Spock said, we shouldn't spank our children when they misbehave because their personalities would be warped and their self-esteem might be damaged. And we said, okay. Then someone said that teachers and principals um, better not discipline our children when they misbehave. And administrators said no one had better touch a student when they misbehave because they don't know what any bad, they don't want any bad publicity and we surely don't want to be sued. And we said okay. Then someone said let our daughters have abortions if they want they won't even have to tell their parents. And we said, okay. Then someone else said, let's give our sons and daughters all the condoms they want so that they can have all the fun they desire and we won't have to tell their parents. And we said, okay. And then some of our top officials said that it doesn't matter what we do in private as long as we do our jobs. And we said, okay. As long as I have a job and the economy is good, it doesn't matter what anyone else does in private, it's nobody's business. 
So now we're asking ourselves why our children don't have a conscience, why they don't know right from wrong, why it doesn't bother them to kill someone. If we think about it long and hard enough, we probably can figure it out. Could it have been something to do reaping what we sow? So, that was from a newspaper article in New York. We have to say no to these people. They are dangerous. They are part of the problem in killing, us killing each other. We have our children killing, no conscience. We've had Richmond, I'm going to tell you guys, a lot of you all aren't from Richmond. This has been the number one murder capital in the United States for a long time. All the figures aren't put out and they forge the figures so you know what's happening in this city of corruption. The next poem that I have is called, My Name is Cocaine. Beware, my friend, my name is Cocaine, Coke for short or The Rock. I entered this country without a passport. Ever since then, I've been hunted and sought. I'm more valued than diamonds, more treasured than gold. Use me once and you too will be sold. I'll make a schoolboy forget his books. I'll make a beauty queen neglect her looks. I'll take a renowned speaker and make him a bore. I'll take your mama and make her a W-H-O-R-E whore. I'll make the school teachers forget how to teach. I'll make a preacher not want to preach. All kinds of people have fallen under my wing. Just look around, you can see the result of my sting. I've got daughters turning on their mothers. I've got sisters robbing their brothers. I've got husbands pimping their spouses. I'm the king of crime and the prince of destruction. I'll cause the organs of your body to malfunction. I'll cause your babies to be born hooked. I'll turn the most honest of men into crooks. I'll make you rob, steal, and kill. When you are under my power, you have no will. I've, I've destroyed actors, politicians, rappers, and sports heroes. I've decreased bank accounts from millions to zero. I'm a bad habit, too much for the man. I've caused him to invest in the battering ram. Well, now, you know, what will you do? Remember, my friend, it's all up to you. If you decide to jump in my saddle, you'd better ride me well. For on the white horse of cocaine, I ride you straight to hell. And that's it for now. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Ms. Bird. Thank you, Ms. Bird. Um, Renita, are you available? She's working with the kids and with food. All right. Well, it seems like the food is coming together. And so we'll take this pause to let everybody get something, some nutrients and things. And um, when we come back together um, after a short while, not long, we're going to do the Know Your Rights training. And we will expound more on the, um, the new laws that we're, we're facing, the NDAA and the massive um, incarceration. And um, we'll get some more information on how to prepare ourselves to deal with these things in a, in a way that we'll, that we'll need to know. And um, Stephen and, um, and the Wing Nuts will um, present that, how that, that workshop going. And um, so right now, unless something immediately needs to be announced, we're going to um, allow everybody to eat. Hello, and thank you for everyone who actually did come out. I know I'm very proud of the turnout and the event in itself. I wasn't very active when Occupy started, 
but as I saw Jason doing the research and more posts coming in from Occupy the Hood, Occupy Richmond, and just hearing about it on the news, it really caused me to want to see what's going on and to try and do some things to change it because I am a very big advocate for the kids. So they picked me to deal with the kids today and I'm glad because to see the turnout and my children and themselves told neighbors to let their kids come even if they couldn't so they could partake of what we're trying to do and better the neighborhood. You know, um, with the mass incarceration issue, the housing issues we have, people trying to find jobs in Richmond, us all getting together the way we are is what we should have been doing a long time ago. I am so glad that finally people have stopped saying, I'm going to get involved, I want to do that, yeah, this is something we need. And instead of actually being that person to step forward and say, forget it, no one else is doing it, I'm going to start something, that the ones who have started something are here and we're all working together to make Richmond, Virginia, the United States, and the world a whole lot better. I just pray that as this movement moves on and we really work towards getting some of these things done, that we'll have a bigger turnout and hopefully more people and those who are in their homes and see the gathering, because I know they do, I live in the area, will come out and see what's going on. I know a few people have done it already, but hopefully, you know, Word of mouth seems to be the biggest thing that we've got going. The media will play their spin on it to make it look like a negative thing when it's not. And at first, I won't lie, I was wondering if that's what Occupy Wall Street was about. And that's kind of why I fell back. But as I got to meet people and heard about the meetings, I learned, no, this is actually something that we've been trying to fight all along. It's just a different face, a different name. So hopefully people will realize this is nothing new. This is something we've been dealing with since the United States started. Our founding fathers went through this mess, and now we're just having to finish the struggle. Thank you all for coming out. Food is slowly being cooked. There are some things already ready. Anyone who's hungry, feel free to make your plates. We need to understand that one of the most powerful resources is mission. Mission determines your actions. That's why it was important that you distributed that yellow sheet. I don't know whether you remember it or not. But it told what you stood for. And really it's conservative because what it is calling for is America to do what it promised to do. And so it's important that we have solidarity with the understanding that we can do more together than we can do apart. There needs to be, if you cannot have togetherness and you have internal fighting, you weaken yourself. That Now that doesn't mean that you do not practice the First Amendment. Any kind of organization that is to succeed and is democratic, you're going to have uh, discord, you're going to have disagreement, and you're going to have different ideas. And that is the purpose of the First Amendment so that you can get all of the ideas on the table. If you get all of the ideas on the table, you have a better chance of getting the best idea. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So, <clears throat> what we've got, this is an enormous turnout today. When you consider where you are, you're in Richmond. And then when you look at the people, the people themselves are saying, we've had enough. The people are saying in Richmond, in the nation, and around the world, we have had enough, and that is being recognized. Time Magazine even, the establishment publication, recognize who you are. And that should send a message. So whenever they tell you, you know, you don't have any goals. 
whenever they tell you that what is this all about? You know, remind them of what America has promised and failed to deliver on and how you have awakened them to this. I can tell you every morning that the mayor woke up, I'm pretty certain he was reminded of the First Amendment and the fact that you are protesters who were strategically located. And so what we have to do is be creative, follow our agenda, our mission, live up to it, deal with solidarity, practice solidarity, know the force of solidarity, and if we do that, we will definitely win. We are winners. We are not losers like those figures that are on Monument Avenue. Let me say that again. We are not losers like those figures on Monument Avenue. And let me tell you, some of us had our heads screwed on right when there were real heroes placed on Monument Avenue. Someone did it, and they did it right. Now this, this also told you something else about the city. The city moved quickly to remove the real heroes and the heroines. While they're still pushing to get money to maintain the villains. Now I'm talking about culture. The force of culture. What should we do to advance a culture that promotes true democracy? That does not exist in Richmond. There is a time for a regeneration of culture. There is a time for regeneration of movement, such as the civil rights movement, the anti-Vietnam movement, the abolitionist movement. There needs to be a regeneration of those objectives and those movements to fit modern times. Because what we are facing is a modern brand of enslavement that we should not find acceptable at all. It should totally be objected to and it, we should fight it to the end. Again, I want to thank Mark. Again, I want to thank Jason and all of you. Many of the faces that I'm familiar with and it's so good to see the evidence of solidarity in a winning movement for justice for all. Thank you all very much. Wow. Thank Mr. Boone again. Solidarity. I see it. Solidarity. I feel it. Solidarity. Solidarity, I taste it when I see my family, see my people together like this. And he and he articulated it well. We represent something powerful here. We represent a diverse and a, and, a, and, a, and a collective call out for change. And we need to stand on it and practice that. And, and, and not be afraid to come together and put our efforts behind it. Black, white, tall, thin, gay, straight, it doesn't matter. We all human beings. And we need fairness, we need social justice, we need these things, and we need to make them accountable, we need to make, make the, um, the other people aware, and wake them up. We're waking up the government, and they doing what they gonna do, and we gonna do what we gotta do. And you know what I'm saying? And we gonna keep going forward, and we gonna keep gaining momentum, and we gonna keep putting our heads together, and reorganizing, and redefining, and coming back to the table, and executing. And we gonna make it happen. One challenge. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get it. Whether we win or lose, we're going on to the next challenge. And we're going to keep on going facing challenges every day. I love y'all. 
And we got a young man who would like to speak to you all right now named Marcus. He's from the community and he want to show his appreciation for us coming together and gathering together here in the heart of Richmond. Marcus. What's up, man? Occupy Richmond, Occupy the Hood. How y'all feeling today? How y'all feel about this weather today, man? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Word. Hey, look. I'm going to just tell y'all my name is Marquise. Marquise. That means royalty. That's why I'm wearing purple. I know who I am. Um, I asked somebody before I came up here. I told them. I said, look. The words that's coming out of my mouth, they're raw. And they said, look, that's fine. Just be mindful of the children. Ain't no vulgarity in it. And just pretty much speak from your heart because people are well. So can I keep it real with y'all? Yeah. I'm going to ask this again though. Because people say, yeah, keep it real. Can I keep it real with y'all? Yeah. This a hundred percent, not ninety nine point nine 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 percent. This a hundred right here. Check it out. I'm gonna tell you about myself so y'all know well, who is this guy and what he got to say. My name is Marquise Trent, born and raised here in Richmond, Virginia. I lived in the South Side for years. I lived in the county. I lived in Holly Park, Churchill, North Side. I've been everywhere. Um, I've been in the streets for a long time, doing things I ain't supposed to do: robbery, selling drugs, coke. I mean, you name it. You know, this the hood, as they tell us. So we, it's time to be aware and mindful of what goes in our hoods, what goes on in our hood. And this fine to do, however, I'm tired, man. I just left a funeral from a female I call my sister, her daughter. If y'all seen the child who died from the allergic reaction to peanut butter in Southside, they're my family, man. So that alone pushed me over the edge to where enough is enough, you know what I'm saying? So we talking about injustice, I heard Mr. Boone. Give a clap for Mr. Boone, where you go? Because a real man would stand up, a real man stands up for what he believes in, no matter what the causes, the circumstances. That's a real man. You know, it's easy to talk when it's time to put on, when it's time to walk. A lot of people leave, y'all. Straight up, you know what I'm saying? I'm prior military, I'd have been in Kuwait, I'd have been in Iraq. I know what it feels like when someone is trying to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Here and abroad. I've been in these streets for real. We talk about Occupy the Hood. What are we going to do about it? This is wonderful. This truly is. However, what are we going to do about the violence? What are we going to keep doing about the drug? That's enslaving not only the black people, white people too. There is no race. It's called humanity. You know what I'm saying? Because we all spoke with one tongue. And if you want the proof, I can show you the book. Y'all know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Now we got different languages. A house divided can't stand. So if we divide it in any way, we ain't gonna stand. So what the enemy, y'all can give that title and that meaning to yourself. What the enemy, who the enemy is. If he can keep discord, then there will be no standing. You know what I'm saying? How are you supposed to be brothers and then I come around your block and wet it up. That means come around your neighborhood shooting up places and things. That's not brotherly love. That's hatred. That's hatred. And we all know about Richmond. If y'all didn't know a little history, this was the capital of the Confederacy. You know, where slaves were bought and trade downtown at Farmer's Market. I'm a real man though and I'm far from sensitive. I love everybody out here. We can't change the past no matter how much you cry about it. Stop crying and do something about it. And it's going to the root. If y'all was not aware, and I'm, I'm going to keep it 100, man. Like I said, I'm proud military. And all my veterans and people who've been there know. What they show on these cameras and show on these news ain't what go on, man. It ain't what go on, man. And I'm going to tell y'all now. I'm willing to die for what I believe in. I proved that. I proved it. So I'm here to speak a word that will hopefully change your lives for the better. Because a lot of stuff get ready to hit the fan. And since we are aware, it's time for an, an increase of awareness. Of the real knowledge that's going to set you free, man. If y'all don't know what I represent, read the shirt. It ain't no secret. It ain't nothing to hide. 
Jesus a real person, man. Yes, I said his name. If you got a problem with it, it's all good. Because he loves you regardless. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. And nothing you can do about it. And I love you and it ain't nothing you can do about it. You know what I'm saying? Because love conquers all. Let me say that one more time. Love conquers all. Not some, not a little bit, not halfway, not three quarters, not an eighth. Ounces, pounds for my hustlers. Come on. What's happening? Love conquers all, man. So if you, now at first I couldn't understand what Martin was doing, like bro, these people smacking you upside the head, and you talking about some love. Because he knew Jesus, and he knew that that man said, look, if your man smack you in the face, turn the other cheek. I found that difficult to, to comprehend, like if he smack me in the face, I supposed to turn the other way. That's the compassion, that's the true show of love. Because if he smacked me in my face and I ain't do nothing, y'all guess what I did? I took his power. Yeah. It's all about the power. If you take somebody power, you take somebody bullets out their nine Glock 45, FN95, AR15, M16, I love guns, 249. If y'all take a man bullets from his gun, what are you gonna do? He can't shoot, he might smack you with it. I got smacked with a pistol before too, and it it is not cool, like you know what I'm saying? It is not cool. But, but honestly though, I'm loved to be here and I'm glad that I'm here because I see the faces. And this is what I was born for, 5785. Five being grace and completion. And I got grace and mercy right here. You can't see none of my tattoos. Seven being perfection. What's the date? Somebody tell me what's the date. Ho, what's that? One, ultimate divine unity. Seven, divine perfection and completion. 12, divine law and government. This so-called government that I fought for is full of lies, like that dude's shirt right there, coming off the airways. They feed you lies 24-7. And if you wasn't aware, it's called the power of suggestion. Who knows about the power of suggestion? Just let me see a hand. Word. The power of suggestion says, in layman's terms, whatever you constantly put before someone by natural law will take place in their actions. Through your eyes, the windows to your soul, to your subconscious mind, which runs 95% of your life. You don't believe it? Look at your life. Look where you came from. Why do people have the hood mentality? Because they in the hood. Duh. You can take somebody straight from Wilkham Jackson Ward, Creighton, Mosby, Afton, Bell Mead, yes, he's from Richmond, and take them to Japan. And we can bet a dollar to a donut, that baby gonna come back speaking fluid Japanese. Because it's his environment. The hood gonna stay the hood that we've always known unless we do something about it. It can be the hood. Let it be the hood. I'm from the hood. We from the hood. However, what's going on in the hood? I'm tired of seeing these fiends, bro. I'm tired of seeing these homeless people. I'm tired. I served them. What's up? I served crack to my people. You know what I'm saying? Cocaine. Yeah, all of that. I just sat in sales next to people that's detoxing and it stink. It stink. I'm tired of hearing this music. Yeah, I'm a rapper. I've been doing it for 14 years. Excuse me, I'm not a rapper. I'm an artist. It's a difference. I'm tired of them talking about all this dope boy stuff. I'm tired, bro. I've been listening to it for years. And you just get tired, man. I'm tired of giving these people your money, paying lawyers, pissing for your P.O. That sucks. If you haven't experienced it, it sucks. You are a slave. However, not just the blacks are slaves. And I'm here to say that. If you got a problem with it, hang me now. Kill me now. Because I ain't going to shut up. Enough is enough, bro. We all enslaved by this falsified media, by these cell phones, by Facebook, by Twitter. Come on, man. What y'all going to do to me that ain't been done? I don't like what he's talking about. Well, I'd have been shot at. I'd have been almost stabbed. I'd have been in car crashes. I'd have been in helicopters being shot at by the enemy. I'd have been almost drowned. What else? Y'all? What's up? If it's my time, it's my time, and I'm going with a smile on my face. Cause I'd have been there, had it done that, and I know what my end is. That's right. If you don't know what your end is, that would be the definition of loss. 
That's the definition of loss. And I'm not here to condemn, because Jesus ain't come to condemn. He came that you might be saved. You feel me? That's right. That's a real truth. And I can only speak what's true to me, and not true to me what is the truth. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You know what I'm saying? People give, we give belief to truth. You know what I'm saying? We give belief to truth. However, facts can't be disputed. You got theory and then you got law. Law is higher than theory. And y'all can guess, but I know he's real. And if y'all want to know who is real, who can end up saving you when all this done, then meet me over there and we can talk about it. Because I'm going to tell you one quick thing before I get off. If y'all were not aware, January 1st, 2012, over 40,000 new laws. 40,000 new laws were put out over our nation. And I'm going to show you the scariest one and I'm going to walk off. N.D. Double A. If you are not aware, become aware immediately. There is no time to waste. Clubs, parties, all that. It's to keep you doing like this all day. While they doing what they want to do. And if you haven't known, I'm going to make this quick. N.D. Double A gives the government, military, people like myself, coming through our streets to indefinitely that means for as long as they want to lock y'all up if they feel that you a threat to national security so before that if you don't mind can I say a couple words of prayer bro hey look all men take your head off in the presence of glory is not myself it is the God that y'all might do or don't believe in. Where God is, he's here. And I'm going to go before him right here. Lord, thank you. I come to you as a humble servant, an empty vessel, a man. And I ask that you will forgive me of my sins and show yourself, not me. For these people came here for your word. And these are the last days. No matter what anyone believes, it is the absolute fact, oh God. Thank you for these souls touch and move on every person that needs to know you. So that we can move forth and continue to occupy the hood and continue to occupy Richmond for a true purpose, oh God. And not a march with no end, not a march with no purpose, oh God, but a movement to change lives and sweep this nation like never seen before. So we just ask that you will pour out your spirit on us in these last days because they're very evil and I've seen the atrocities, oh God. I've witnessed many atrocities, oh God. And I ain't scared to freak about it. I ain't scared to speak about it. Thank you. Lord Jesus, we bless your name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Marquise, thank you. Thank you. If you ain't speak my heart and articulate so well your birth your own heart, wow. You know what I'm saying? I've been inspired. And I'm glad everybody here was here to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing prepped, nothing planned. And I, I love it. You know, I love it. Um, um, before we move on to Know Your Rights training, I want to uh, speak again about the NDAA. That I know a lot of us are aware of it, but that's a very serious um, bill, very serious law that's coming in effect. And we must, we must do what we have to do is speak out against it, struggle with it, and, uh, and uh, make aware to the others and, and those uh, in this uh, in this uh, community and the, the world that that's not good. We don't need that. For me speaking out and for us coming together, if that's a, a, a threat to national security, come on now. Is this a democracy or are we in dictatorship? You know what I'm saying? They're controlling every aspect of how we live and think. And, and, and they're going and um, implementing laws that counteract our constitutional rights. And it is, it's not to be stood for, not to be taking place. And I thank you all for um, giving Marcus your ear. And I thank Marcus again for sharing with us. Um, before we move into our Know Your Rights training workshop, um, Kente, we'd like to share with you. I, I already been up here earlier, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to um, say, Brother Marquis, I don't see where he's at, but he, um, Brother over there touched me because I seen the story on, I don't know if that was his, his cousin or his niece or whatever, on the little girl that passed. And I want us to just do a little moment of, moment of um, silence for that because 
I seen it um, on the news the other day, and I was like, she passed off a peanut butter of allergic reaction in schools. So what that goes to show you is that we have to educate ourselves far as with the schools. The schools have to be educated on what our children don't like and what they do like, you know, on different situations. So I just want us to have a moment of silence for um, Brother Marquis' relative that passed right now. I just want us to have a moment of silence right quick.